My name is Simon Ianson. I'm Chief Strategy Officer here at Hoist Group. We are today holding a webinar and we're going to talk about digital transformation within hospitality. Uh, this is part of an ongoing campaign that we are running at the moment. Sorry, please, can you go on mute if you're, uh, if, if, thank you. Uh, this is part of an ongoing campaign that we're running at the moment. Uh, this is a digital transformation campaign. For more details, please go to our website at www.hoistgroup.com forward slash digital innovation, uh, sorry, digital transformation. Uh, as I said, this is part of a series of webinars as well. Uh, we've got today where we're gonna look at what digital transformation is uh, for hotels, so primarily from the technology community who work with hotels. And I'll introduce our panelists in a few moments time. And then on the 16th of June at the same time, that's 10 o'clock London and Dublin, that's 11 o'clock Paris and Stockholm and 2 p.m. in Dubai. Uh, we're gonna hold a follow-up uh, webinar uh, to today's where we're gonna look at it very much from the hotelier's perspective. And we've got a number of very eminent hoteliers joining us uh, for, uh, for, for that session. Um, so, so you'll see it from both sides of, of, of the ecosystem, if you like. Uh, in terms of today's session, uh, we're planning for about an hour. If it goes on, fantastic. That'll mean that there's lots of questions or we're talking too much, one of the two. Hopefully it's lots of questions. Um, but really it's designed today to be an interactive session. Uh, you'll notice in the Zoom taskbar that you've logged into here that there is a Q&A button and it's there for a reason. That's if you want to raise a question or raise a point, uh, simply write it in the Q&A function. Matt and the rest of the marketing team uh, will be fielding those questions in the background uh, and the plan is to come to a Q&A uh, once the initial webinar discussion uh, is drawing to a close. So if you've got any questions, uh, we'll try and answer them during, during the session. Uh, we'll definitely answer them uh, in the Q&A dedicated spot towards the end of this. Uh, and uh, if there are any follow-up questions, don't, don't be shy, don't be a stranger, drop us a note at marketing at uh, and we'll make sure that the relevant subject matter experts get back to you. So um, before we jump in, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have three of them today, and gentlemen, I'm very uh, honored and glad that you joined us. Uh, in no particular order, we have Mr. Juan Aguirre. Juan, give us a wave. Juan is the sales, the partner sales director, Emir at Ruckus Comsco. Uh, we also have uh, Peda Vinca. Peda is the director of ICAM at TP Vision. Uh, and last but certainly not least, we have Damien Lucas, who is the chief product officer at ATEM. Gentlemen, in no more than 60 seconds, and I will time you, please tell the audience a little bit about who you are, who you work for, and what you do. Who wants to go first? Um, okay, let me go first. My name is uh, Peter Vinke, as, uh, as mentioned by, uh, by Simon. I'm the, uh, the global director for ICAM for Philips Professional Display Solutions. I'm based in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm representing uh, Philips uh, TV Pro TV with the, within the hospitality industry and working close together with the international hotel chains. Uh, next to that, I also have a global role in the sales management for Pro TV around the world in hospitality. Fantastic. Thank you, Peter. That is a perfect start in terms of timing and yeah, right quantity you are, of information. You are, you are Who wants to go time. next? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go next. So my, my name is Juan Aguirre. Uh, I head a partner sales and channel for, for Ruckus, part of Comscope. Uh, I've been involved in hospitality for probably the last 15 years, checked in, never checked out. Uh, so I also head up for the hospitality and MDU uh, vertical with it, with, within Ruckus. And uh, we, we, we provide the, the, the backbone to digitalization, which is, which is the network. Uh, and, and increasingly we're being challenged by the fact that it needs to be smart, it needs to provide the data uh, to enable digitalization across the industry. Thanks, Juan. Uh, Damien, how about you? Um, so hello everyone, I'm Damien Lucas. Um, in fact, I... I think, uh, I think Damien has some connection problems. Peter, can you still hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you are? I have a yes. technical video delivery solution. Sorry, 
Damien, we're having a few connectivity issues with you. I, I hope it's not a ruckus Comscope network that you're working on. But uh, <laughs> can you uh, can you just repeat there, please? It's, uh... Sorry about that. So I'm Damien Lucas. Um, I have a technical background. I started with, I mean, I started as a developer on VLC Media Player, which is a software for video delivery and video play, playback solution. I really think that IP is going to be the way to deliver video. And this is what I've been doing for quite a few years now. Um, I started a company called Anivia um, quite a long time ago. Um, and Nivea was really focused on video delivery over IP and innovation around all those new ways of um, uh, using TV services. And Nivea is now part of uh, Atem Group since uh, about a year, and I'm running the product uh, for Atem as of today. So Atem is providing both the encoding part as well as the video delivery part. Um, on the two front, on one front for the content provider and on the second front really for uh, the uh, business partners such as the hospitality market. Fantastic, thank you Damien. So as you can see audience, this is a very varied panel we've got here. The, the name of the game today is about education and discussion. And really I think we should set the context a little bit. What is digital transformation in hospitality? I, I took a quote here, and it, it can be defined as a process by which hotels or other enterprise in, uh, businesses deploy carefully selected digital technologies that deliver a superior guest experience in line with their current and future expectations. There's also a strong sense of making back office operations more efficient through digitization. Key to that is also reduction of costs or increasing the flexibility. And ultimately, it should provide you with the means by which in an increasingly competitive space to have more opportunity to directly interact with your guests. And that's what it's all about here. What digitization we think will, uh, we will discuss in a minute should be all about within, in, in hospitality is about improving your bottom line and driving, driving guests into your hotel and into repeat stays as well. In summary, the process itself, it's all about taking old analog processes and making them digital. And hopefully the, uh, the panel is gonna share some relevant examples here. Gentlemen, over to you. Um, I'd like each of you to comment briefly on what you define or what your company really defines as digital transformation for hotels. One, do you wanna lead this one off? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, I think digitalization is a tool amongst others to address uh, business needs. Okay, so uh, the, world, the world is changing, hotels are changing, expectations are changing, whether it's staff or whether it's guests, uh, and, and the industry is having to adapt. And digitalization is one of the tools amongst many others, uh, which could be HR tools, which could be training tools, which could be what you want to, to, to help and ease, to help to ease that transformation. It's not digitalization for digitalization's sake. It's, it's responding to to, to, to need to, to, to modernize, modernize the industry in line with, with, with new generations and new ways of working um, is, is, is the way we, we see it. Okay, okay, and maybe we'll get some input on, on how you're delivering this in a, in, a, in a few moments time. Damien, if I can come to you next, you know, how does ATEM Group see the world of, of digital transformation? So obviously for TV, Digital TV is already there for quite a for quite few years now, where I don't know much analog TV system still in place. So moving to digital TV is not the only point behind digitalization of the hotel. Uh, digital TV is interesting because it it also comes with new possible usage. Um, video on demand was a trend again years ago, but nowadays we see that more and more we have new usage that are required. Um, start over, being able to use replay. Um, but even more importantly, nowadays with digital TV, people are, expect, are expecting to have a bring your own device service, making sure that they will be able to watch TV on their screens. And that to me is a much more uh, important impact of this digitalization in the, um, in the TV world. And another one, which is obviously very important in this industry is the cloudification that becomes possible thanks to digitalization. 
So those those would be really um, really the the, the 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 different axes I see behind digitalization of the TV enablement of new usage, um, the possibility to have bring your own device solution, including everything around casting, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the cloudification of the infrastructure. Some, some meaty morsels to chew on there. We'll come back to many of those in a moment. Peter, let's come to you. In terms of Philips's view of the world and, and, and how we're going digital, give us some anecdotes, if you would. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. But, but first of all, my definition of, uh, of digitalization, digital transformation is, is, of course, always to assist the hotels, assist the guests in their efforts to improve their operation to improve the hotelier's operation, to make it simpler, to make it easier, to make it co more cost efficient. That is for me, digi uh, the digital use of, of, uh, of uh, in, in, in hospitality. And of course, we, we, as a company, we already have uh, some, some nice uh, ways of digital ser services in place, uh, digital concierge functionalities, the digital, uh, the digital check in, check out, uh, we have uh, all kinds of, 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 of other services around it, uh, but all in all, it has to help the hotel in their operations, also it has to help the, the hotel in their guest facing services. So we see digital technologies transforming all spheres of life uh, and business, not just hospitality. Um, but as an industry, you know, I, I think it's because of its high fragmented nature. Uh, hospitality delivers digital transformation to varying degrees and varying levels of success. And we'll talk about that again also a little bit later in, in this discussion. I also read somewhere that, and it was a phrase I really liked, and it described us as a generation of DIY travelers. And I think the example here that they were referencing was, you know, when was the last time you printed an airline ticket? Do you remember what they looked like? Those little, you know, rectangular, uh, carbon copy, uh, you know, uh, uh, ticket forms. Uh, or when did you last print a boarding pass? And the whole idea here was that the benefits of digitalization, taking old analog processes and making them digital, and then distributing them in ways that are very convenient to uh, the consumer, such as, you know, your boarding pass on, on your mobile phone, um, are ways of making travel and hospitality more affordable, accessible, and convenient. And in the airline industry, perhaps that's the bellwether of it. Uh, they are highly digitized. And COVID-19 aside, we'll hopefully all be traveling again very soon and, 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 and benefiting from that slick experience. Within hospitality, we seem to be a slower uptaker of digital transformation as a concept. Do you think that's a fair point? Or do you think I'm being unfair to, to people within the hospitality space? Who, who, would like to go, who would like to go first on this question? Uh, I, 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 the, the airline industry is interesting. And, and what we've seen in the airline industry is we've seen different actors with different objectives come together. Uh, the hospitality industry has a multitude of actors. You have a brands, you have a property owners, the asset managers, uh, you have the operational staff. Um, and everybody has a slightly different objective. Um, and, I, and I think what's, what's key going forward and what digitalization can help is to provide that same objective for everybody. So if I'm an asset manager or a property owner, uh, going digital and having the right networks delivers value to my asset. Uh, as a brand, it delivers guest satisfaction and, 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 and brand satisfaction to the hotel staff and operations, it delivers efficiency, and ultimately to the guests, it, it, uh, it, it, it delivers uh, uh, a, a, a modern experience. So I think, I think hospitality has struggled aligning uh, the, the, the different objectives, uh, the different uh, views on return on investment. Some, you know, some guys have a three-year return on investment on a property, they set it off, so they're not going to invest. And so all these different players need to start aligning. And I think digitalization uh, is something which can help these players to reach common objectives and to speak a common language as, as, as well. Um, and that's probably something the airline industry has succeeded in, in, in doing. But hang on a second. Yeah. Let's take an example within hospitality itself. You know, since 
the onset of the pandemic recently, we've seen an absolutely uh, paramount need for contactless technologies for, to maintain social distancing so that hotel operations can keep running uh, and to provide that hygiene factor that we as guests, when we're nervous about going to stay or go traveling out of our home environment, even to our offices, let's be honest here, many of our offices have been, have been enforceably closed by governments. You know, we're looking for that reassurance that the risk is going to be absolutely minimized. And so, you know, if I take an example from us here at Hoist Group, we've seen a massive explosion in interest, in positive interest in online registration, online check-in, online check-out, uh, and mobile key, which means you can bypass the entire front desk experience uh, completely. Um, and not only does this give a sort of hygiene factor, but this is a technology that, or a range of technologies that are gonna long outlive COVID-19. You know, something like mobile key as a technology will mean that guests, when they get used to it and it becomes more the norm as it is with many brands particularly, and some independents too, will mean less pressure on the front desk. So there are long-term benefits here for hoteliers. You know, do I reduce the number of staff that I have on my front desk and save costs? Or do I keep the same number of staff on the front desk, but because they've got more time, because people are using mobile key long into the future, I can spend more time cross-selling and up-selling to them. So there you know, lots of benefits from digital technology there. On the online registration, check in and check out, that's saving reams of paper. It's consolidating data in a single place. There are huge operational benefits there and the green footprint as well, which I know is something Philips is very keen on. Maybe Peter, you can, you, you can jump in on that in a second. So my question is really, you know, why aren't hotels jumping on this quicker, you know? Yeah. Uh, let, let me step in here as well. Uh, of course, uh, hospitality has been made aware of uh, the con conservative nature. Um, the focus is, of course, renting a, a decent bed and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a good bath and a, and a back breakfast. That is their prime goal. On the other hand, of course, uh, the, the hotels have been confronted with, uh, with uh, new sh uh, screen technologies, they have been confronted with with new services, uh, like you rightfully said, with the check-in, check-out, uh, digitalization, with all kind of guest loyalty uh, functionalities. But, and it's, therefore, it's, it's also not easy. I mean, guests walk into their hotels of today expecting seamless connection to Wi-Fi, expecting seamless connection with their devices on all kinds of other services. So it, it all in all, it, 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 took, it takes a lot of courage also for the hotelier to, uh, to adapt to all these, uh, these elements. And of course, yes, like you rightfully said, we, we as a company, we accommodate um, yeah, help and, and, and support and services to, uh, to the hospitality industry in, in terms of digital concierging, in terms of self-check-in, in terms of we even have a people count system in place where uh, you are... Um, uh, uh, where you can use, which you can use to manage your uh, your uh, general spaces uh, to to have the the, the necessity or of having the the right and the, the, the maximum number of people in in the in the in the area, uh, wayfinding systems, uh, in room services, uh, all kind of uh, services we provide in a digital and and a a, a, a new modern way which we can, of course, be beneficial to, uh, to the hotel industry for that. And like you said, also the environmental services, the environmental health, uh, the green policies, uh, all these elements. Yeah, we have a, an extensive policy and an extensive program in, in assisting hospitality in that as well. Damien, just before we come to you, um, there's, an, there's a question from one of the attendees on the call, and it says, what do you mean by cloudification? Uh, cloudif it's a great question. Cloudification is as follows, just put very shortly. Uh, in the old days, everything used to sit on premise, on property. You had a PMS module on property, you had various servers and lots of different hardware on property. And there's an increasing trend within the industry today to remove those things from property, those physical aspects, and to host those services somewhere else, typically in the cloud through Amazon Web Services or you know, through uh, Azure by Microsoft or any of these, these cloud platforms or, or private cloud too, for that matter. You know, we operate through, through private cloud data centers for a number of our products uh, across the world. 
Um, so the idea here is you retain the same level of service, but you don't have necessarily the investment in the hardware on your property. Uh, you don't have uh, you don't have the problem also of having to go and change and upgrade that hardware physically on site the whole time you want to make changes to your guest experience as an example. The idea of cloudification is simpler, cheaper, easier to roll out uh, and far more scalable, particularly attractive to growing hotel groups as well and chains as well. So it means you can, you know, you can add units to your, uh, to, to, to your hotel base quite easily with the technologies you, you need. So cloudification is literally taking stuff off property, uh, retaining the same functionality, but doing everything virtually. Uh, and you know, with the secure internet technologies that uh, I'm sure one would love to tell us about, but we probably don't have time uh, to go into that particular uh, detail today. But if you are interested, do drop us a note and we'll make sure that you get in front of one uh, and speak to him. Uh, cloudification is, is, is entirely that. It's, it's, it's using the internet cloud uh, as, as the repository of your services to provide secure, efficient, and flexible operation within your own. Okay, keep those questions coming. That's a, that's a, that's a great starter. Damien, when we come to you, let's change tack a little bit. I'm gonna throw you a question. You know, you're a provider of hard and software to the industry. You've got great products out there. Why, we're also sort of asking hoteliers, why are you, why are some of us not, you know, we're, all of us, many of us are hoteliers, is on this call. Why are we not as advanced as some other industries? Uh, there's an implication of investment here. Why should people invest in your technologies? What are the benefits of going to a cloudified service through an EVA or, or, or other services? Give us, give us your thoughts on that, please. Yep, sure. And um, maybe uh, to illustrate that, we can come back to the example of airlines. And you, you and, and it's very valid, I think. Now you see more and more airlines where you don't have a screen in your seat anymore. And you just connect to the Wi-Fi and you've got the TV service available on, on your tablet. This is becoming very common on mid-range, short-range flights um, in the US, but not only in the US. I mean, in, in France, it's the case as well. And in more and more countries, you see that. This is really the bring your own device uh, uh, ID, which is obviously less cost. If you count the number of screens in, 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 a, in a plane, that's definitely a, a, a huge cost. So it's also greener. And on top of that, in terms of hygiene, it's also much better. Instead of having those touch screens that many passengers have also touched before you, you can just your, use your own tablet. So this is something that happened already in um, in, in the airline industry, but how many hotels now come without a TV screen or with a TV screen that is only used in order to cast something from your own device? This has not yet been really widely deployed uh, in the hotel industry. So looking at that, um, why, why not? And, and maybe what are the benefits that, that would move? Why not? very likely because the structure of the industry makes it quite long to actually change a TV system. Those TV system in the industry, most of the time they are installed and once they work, they actually stay there for whatever, five, seven years sometimes, uh, just, just because it works. And there is a complexity to change a TV system, which is probably one of the reason why it's, it's not uh, being upgraded as, um, as fast and as regularly as, as we would like to. Um, so when we look at, at the benefits and especially uh, the benefits of a cloud-based solution, one is the ability to easily personalize the, the content. If you look at what it was a few years ago, if you wanted to add a given channel inside a hotel, it was a nightmare potentially adding a satellite dish on the roof, uh, potentially adding more hardware and so on and so on. Thanks to a cloud solution, there is nothing to be done on site. You can just few clicks from the cloud to reconfigure the local lineup of a given hotel or a given hotel chain, hotel brand. Um, this is really something getting very, uh, very simple. But it also enables to create personalized content on the screen. 
And keep in mind that in those hotels room, most of the time, the TV screen has a big, has a, has a big impact on the room. We're looking at having large screen, always larger screen. So this is really a great opportunity to push messages to the rooms. And what we're seeing starting as a trend is the ability to provide specific content, personalized content, whether this is advertising content or just maybe some um, loyalty program based channels displayed on those screen. This is something that we are seeing as a, as a massive trend at the moment. And this is becoming possible by the cloud. Nowadays, it's quite easy for an hotel chain to create a personalized TV channel, for example, for its lo loyalty program, um, put that on the cloud and transmit these channels in all the different properties across the world. 10 years ago, it would have been a nightmare, pretty much impossible to do without uh, having many satellites to relay the signal, et cetera, et cetera. But now thanks to uh, the OTT technology, it becomes very simple to deploy. So I believe those are, those are key drivers. And again, the, the, the green part of the equation will be a key driver, making sure that we stop to uh, stack up a lot of hardware inside the hotels. And we just rely on a simple fiber connection to deliver all the services instead of having thousands of mini add-ins in each hotel, relying on one single add-in in the cloud and then just distribute it through the existing fiber connectivity to the cloud. I strongly believe that we will see that more and more deployed in the coming, year, in the coming years. I agree, thank you for that, Damien. So the implication there, again, to ask that, what is cloudification, what that question is, what, what, that, what that is, yes. Hundreds of individual servers in hundreds of individual hotels or head ends in this instance get replaced by one somewhere in the cloud that provides exactly the same service. It makes, it makes just massive flexibility for you uh, as an operator, as a hotelier. You touched on personalization there. This, this has a real value. You know, personalizing services for your guests is hugely important, something we drive very hard here at Hoist Group. Um, and all our products and services are, are, are designed with that in mind. By personalization, you also sort of start to touch on big data as a, as a concept. One, in terms of cloud big data, leveraging the network technologies that, 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 that you guys provide, can you give examples of perhaps back of house operations, not just the front of house? We always think about the guest here, but we should think about the back of house as well, of how hotels can leverage IP technologies such as managed networks like yours that you provide you know, to help them uh, digitalize their process. Uh, to gather data on their on their operations or their guests, for that matter, you know, think Internet of Things, think think big data here. All right, and and, and just coming just coming back to what they, they, Damon was saying about cloudification before we move on. Uh, basically, we, we we're putting the inter intelligence in in the cloud, but for that to work, you need a network, and you need a, a simple, reliable, and adaptable network you can depend on uh, for a number of years at, at a property level. Uh, and, and that's something in which uh, the brand and also the owner need to invest and which goes some way to providing a return on investment on the asset uh, for the owner. So it's trying to align uh, the different objectives of the different players in, 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 in the industry. The network itself gives a heck of a lot of, 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 of data, okay? And you can, you can collect all that data and you can put it in a corner and not know what to do with it. Uh, and that's very often the case. Everybody wants to do a, a, a data uh, project and have all this data. And then you, you suddenly ask them, what are you going to do about it? What are the key business reasons you're trying to achieve? You know, are, you know, are, are you trying to understand when are you going to invest? Are you trying to understand the reliability of the applications you're, you're, you're rolling out? Are you trying to cross data uh, with data from other sources. So you have a network data, you have a PMS data, you have a guest satisfaction uh, data from the surveys, you have uh, 
the mobile check-in data. Um, and that's when it all starts becoming very, very interesting is when you bring all, all those data points and you start collecting them and, and, and utilizing them and putting some intelligence be, be, be behind that to try and understand the, the behavior uh, of the guests and also to try and understand how do you optimize the interaction between, uh, between the staff amongst themselves, between the staff and the guests and between the staff and the different machines and operating systems you, ha you have in a, in, in, a, in a hotel. So I think we're at a crossroads at the moment where things were being taken in silos before uh, and we're, we're trying to glue them together uh, and we're trying to get uh, people and machines and systems to speak with each other. And it has a direct impact on hotel operations. Um, a staff member chatting uh, through their tablet uh, with, 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 with a guest definitely needs to see quality of service um, and definitely needs to, to understand that that is a reliable uh, method with which to, 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 to interact. Uh, a task management uh, software uh, also, you, you clearly need need things to work. Um, if, if elements are in the cloud, you need to make sure there's no latency. Nobody wants to switch on the, 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 the light switch and then see the light bulbs you know, switch on three seconds afterwards. Uh, so those are all elements which um, you know, the, the different players which intervene have to work together to, uh, to try and, and, and maximize that, that operational uh, efficiency and impact. So let's take that last example there. You talked about task management. In the old days of hotels, in the morning, you'd print off a list of the rooms that were flipping that day that you need to be clean. You'd distribute that on a physical piece of paper to your housekeeper. Your housekeeper would, would distribute those to the cleaning staff. The cleaning staff would then go and clean the rooms. It would be a highly manual process of informing, probably, uh, the, uh, uh, the relevant people that the rooms are clean. You may have guests waiting uh, for a room when a room is clean, but that communication hasn't come back because the person is, is, is heavily engaged in cleaning the next room. You know, with technology, with the move to mobile first, which I think is another key element of, 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 of digitalization, you know, that sort of inefficiency, not only removing the paper-based elements of it, but also quickly getting the room clean and communicating that into the PMS system uh, or to the front desk, you know, are great ways of increasing your efficiency and driving guest satisfaction, all of which has a value. Peter, just before we come to you, um, there are lots of questions starting to stream in as well, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna hold those questions to the end because of the sheer volume of them, otherwise we'll get, we'll get stuck in those right now. So we haven't forgotten you. We, we, we're gonna address those questions systematically as soon as, as soon as we, in about five minutes' time, when we when we finished our, our our sort of introduction here, if, if you like, Peter, big data, improved guest experience, loyalty, guest enjoyment, seamless yeah. working of their devices. These are all themes that one would associate with a good guest experience, driven through a digital experience. Talk to me. Talk to us a little bit about that. It seems. Seems you're the right person to come to on that question. Yeah, big data is of course uh, a very sensitive topic. Um, <clears throat> so for example, our, all our TVs are designed in a way that when the guest leaves the room, all their data has been, has been wiped from the screen in a, in a secure way. Next to that, of course, uh, big data needs to be protected, needs to be impersonalized at first and then if necessary, store in a secured way. And of course, a company like Philips, we do have uh, certified internal processes in place, uh, controlled by, by authorized entities to secure all big data. Then when, if needed, they can be gathered and can be used, uh, used uh, in, in, in a correct manner. Uh, and of course, uh, big data is or guest loyalty. Yeah, it's not us really who is doing that. That's more the hotel itself. We are there to uh, to address the the product through our screens towards the guest and 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 and, and vice versa. Uh, but that is in 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 a, in a sense, we are aware of of the let's say the the, the secured way of handling big data in the in the in, in the cloud and also for the, in the hospitality industry. Um, yeah, we we supply all kind of 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 products and services around the guest loyalty, the guest 
information, preferences, that sort of uh, products uh, we can uh, we can help and assist the the, own, the, the industry with. Um, we are working with wayfinding systems in the hotels. We're working with uh, lots of in-room and guest-facing services, which we can provide with together with companies like, for example, Hoist and others. Um, like already mentioned before, uh, we are we are yeah we are there to let's say visualize um, on screen all these elements. Great. I think we're going to draw the panel discussion. I've got lots more questions to ask you, but the reality is that there's lots coming in from the audience here, and I really want to start to focus on on the audience a little bit as they've uh, as they've put up with us for the last 35 minutes. I think it's only fair that we uh, that we that we tune into their questions and address their questions. Let let me just start to summarise briefly. So we are talking about investment here, okay? We're also talking about quick wins versus long-term strategy. And I think that's really important. What can you digitalize in your hotel? Well, these days, just about everything, but you won't have the budget to do it all in the first instance. So it's about creating a roadmap. It's about sitting down and thinking this through. Uh, there is help available. Contact anyone on this panel or any of their respective companies. I'm sure they'll sit down and, and, and help you talk, talk through with it or, or, or be a, you know, a person for you to bounce ideas off. But the underlying trend here, I think, is permanent. There is a need to invest in the right technologies at the right time, and that will be different for every hotel, okay? We as guests, and we're all guests in hotels, you know, we're immersed in technology on a daily basis. We're using it right now over this Zoom call. And when we come to stay in your hotel, we want our devices working per perfectly. We want services that appeal to us you know, um, I don't need an ad for a hairdresser. I've barely got any hair left kind of thing. You know what I mean? We need to, we need to make sure that the, 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 the ads are, 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 and the offers are at the right, you know, aimed at the right people. We need people to be self-reliant when they're accessing your services, especially as we come out the pandemic. And we need all of this to be provided at a, at a competitive cost. That, that creates quite a challenge. And then there's the back office, as we touched on. We talked about task management briefly. There's such a world of opportunity here with sensors and devices, you know, talking to systems to look at consumption of energy, water, heating, whatever it may be, uh, and presented in the right dashboard to provide you with an overview of your hotel and give you ways and means to increase the operational efficiency of your property. We're only just starting that as an industry. And that's a hugely interesting area for, for me personally and for us as a group. So there's a danger here that if we don't leverage technology and if we stay in the analog world, that you know, you're going to be bleeding your profits because you don't know exactly what it is that your guests necessarily consume. They may tell you what they want, but actually their consumption pattern might be slightly different. Something like big data, albeit under GDPR constraints, and there is a working model for this today, means that you can get your hands on that information. And the danger is if you don't, your competitor up the road might, okay? I think flexibility is very important. You know, look at how, uh, look at some of the new terms we're seeing in the everyday lexicon. We hear about uh, co-working and co-living. You know, how do you dramatically, quickly change your environment uh, from from the assets that you have now? I think technology plays a huge role to be able to be flexible in that. And then there's the whole efficiency and communication amongst your staff. And I think, you know, this is all about providing you with a simple backbone and simple communication, again, probably mobile, uh, to ensure that nothing goes wrong or that you minimize what goes wrong for your guests. There are so many different areas to talk about for digitalization. Um, I just want to draw your attention to our website because, you know, if you're a major international hotel group, you probably have teams of people running around concentrating on this as part of your strategy team but if you're an independent hotel or a small regional group you may not have the luxury of those resources so digitization sounds like a fantastic idea yeah i want to be part on that but where the heck do i start uh, i'd like to yeah, draw your attention as i say to uh, the hoist group website uh, i talked about uh, the campaign we're running and uh, hopefully if uh, technology gods are with us uh, you'll be able to see my screen. Can somebody just stick their thumbs up if you can see my screen? Peter, or you? Ah, thanks, Damien. 
Okay, go to hoistgroup.com forward slash digital transformation. And if you scroll down the page, we have developed a model called the DTAM tool. Okay, click on this. It's a digital technology audit. Okay, and it allows you to enter your details. Uh, I'll do this very quickly. Okay. My real email address. I do encourage you to put yours in. Okay, it's a it's a simple web based form. And as an audit tool, there are simple questions. Do you provide online booking? Yes, I do. Do you have responsive design website? No, I don't. Do you automate and personalize upselling via your website today? No, I don't. There are a list of questions here in the DTAM tool. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just want to show you uh, how, how it works. It's a very simple tool with three answers. Yes, no, or not applicable. If we ask you about spa software, but you don't have a spa in your hotel, put not applicable in. Okay, so I'd encourage you to spend 10, 15, 20 minutes going through the tool, filling in the questions. Uh, it's not, it's, it's very broad ranging. Many of the areas that are looked into today are certainly not within the remit of what Hoist provides as a company. Um, so, so it's really designed as a blueprint and you'll get the output to this uh, for you to be able to understand how digital your hotel experience is at the moment. Uh, and when I talked about building a roadmap it'll also give you a great starting point to start to focus on some areas where you're not very digital today and at least start to ask the questions of how you get those digital. So I'd encourage you to fill in the tool, hoistgroup.com forward slash digital transformation and click on the DTAM link and we'll make sure that you get the information from that and you are, you are able to do your digital order. It's free, you don't need to sign up for anything, you're not gonna get bombarded with with, with, with tons of stuff. We want to help you as we emerge from COVID-19 as a, as a pandemic. We want to help you get back on your feet. And we passionately as a business believe that technology is the right, right way to help drive that. With that, I'm gonna stop uh, the, uh, the formal part of the presentation and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to the questions. So the first two questions are from Lee. Lee, thanks for these. You say post-COVID investment in hospitality has to happen. As Peter and Damien allude to, footfall counting, GDR compliant, of course, will be required to will be a requirement to ensure guests feel comfortable, safe, and secure. Retail is already heavily investing. Hospitality has to follow suit. Okay. Uh, I think that's more of a statement than a question. But yeah, I, I would tend to agree. Um, You've also put a follow-up to that, that the USA is leading the way, advancing far quicker than Europe. Has anyone on the, on the panel experience of this and, and can they guide what we can do in, 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 in UK and Europe? I think that's probably for you one as a question in terms of footfall counting, proximity, location-based services. You know, what is available? What is legal? Can you share that with our, with our audience, please? Okay. Yeah, so this is something we've looked at, and actually, it's something we're working uh, with, with with Hoist on uh, using the using the digital identity or uh, you know presence of people in a in a certain area, uh, and potentially linking it to digital signage to to be able to say, hey, you have four people in the gym. The limit for the gym is five people, so I can still go down from my room uh, and not you know not go down the you know, the twenty stories for for nothing. So, so solutions are available. Uh, it's something we are we are looking to to develop. We've got some uh, we've got some trials going going ahead, uh, and and again, it's something we've explored with with with, with Hoist. Um, the important thing is we need to be nimble and agile here because uh, the numbers will change uh, as we move you know from country to country and also as we move along in time. So anything we do needs to be adaptable. Uh, so, you know, you might have a footfall of 50 people in a buffet area today in three months time, hopefully it will be 70 people, or 80 people. So whatever solution uh, is put in has to adapt and has to, has to fit in with the ecosystem, whether it's signage, whether it's the app, whether it's on the TV, uh, whichever way you, you communicate to staff and to guests. Well, the long, tall and the short of it here, I guess, is that the technology just does exist today. Um, it's already being used as Leah alluded to, heavily in, in, in retail. Um, 
And there's no reason that this technology can't be leveraged in hotels in a, in a non-intrusive way uh, for our guests. That's very important. You know, we don't want our guests feeling that Big Brother is watching the whole time. Um, so we as an industry, I think, need to learn how we do that uh, in a way that's productive for you, the hoteliers, supportive for the guests, and doesn't doesn't infringe their rights. And that's why GDPR exists in the first place. So, so I think from a, a, a legislative framework, uh, we're pretty well protected there. The next question is from Tashfin. Yeah, Tashfin, you raise a really important question here. You said to use a cloud-based IPTV streamer does not outweigh the cost of running huge internet bandwidth. Imagine 55 rooms streaming all together at the same time. Yeah, so not all parts of the world are equal, unfortunately. You know, if you go to Stockholm, where we're based, you can get a gigabit Ethernet line, internet line into your property for a couple of hundred euros a month. You try and do that in Dubai or in Kinshasa or in, you know, some other countries, you're paying tens, if not hundreds of thousands of, 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 of dollars a year for that exact same service. So, so cloudification is, is, I think, a trend that is going to be here to stay. I think it's not going anywhere and it will, and it will accelerate, but it's gonna accelerate at different paces in different countries, purely because the infrastructure and the costs of doing so, if it's cheaper to retain localized uh, on-premise equipment, those options are still available, okay? And actually, even much of that equipment today that's sitting on premise, it's getting smaller and smaller, which is great. Much of the transacting and the intelligence in that equipment is actually done in the cloud already. It's just done in such a way that it's not uh, bandwidth intensive and bandwidth hungry, okay? So the short answer here is, is there comes a tipping point where it makes sense to do this in the cloud economically as well as practically and flexible, because obviously we don't want you to take on massive new costs that would defeat the, ob the object. Uh, I'm not sure what country you're in. I'm not sure what bandwidth prices are like in your, in your area. Certainly within the, the, the LAN requirements within the hotels, ah, I, I'm not sure that you're going to need more you know, more throughput than what you should already be putting into your properties. Many of the groups especially have minimum standards for that, you know, and, and the way structured cabling is and access and wide points are today uh, for guest internet, I think, which is, you know, the number one guest amenity these days, uh, repeatedly. Uh, I think as long as that is dimensioned properly, I think you'll be absolutely fine. But you're absolutely right. It may be cost prohibitive in some regions to do this and others less so. And if I may, um... On, on this topic, sure. if, if, if I may, one, one of the, I mean, the question is obviously legitimate, but we should also think about what are the guests expecting? Because if you don't do so, maybe the guests are going to be all of them watching whatever Netflix or, or whatever OTT service that they will bring in the room. And it will definitely end up being 55 video session inside the hotel. So I understand that this is taking some time and in the different countries, things are moving not at the same pace, but the expectation of the users, the expectations of the guest is to be able to watch video in the room. That's for sure. So planning on having the capacity to deliver 55, whatever HD streams is important. And, and one way the industry is also answering to that question is by uh, bringing super dense compression algorithm in order to bring high quality video in a very small bandwidth. And this is getting smaller and smaller every year. And, and this is part of what we provide as well. So compression technology is reducing the load on the network is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. On the back. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's let's take let's take us out of the room for a minute and watching TV. Um, there's a great question that comes in that says, "Do you think that in a short period of time, TVs will catch their TV channels and content over the Wi-Fi?" As a lot of hotels will still work uh, analogic with regards to TV channels due to wiring issues, and the installation of new wires come with a full refurb. Um, TV over Wi-Fi is doable. Um, streaming is probably a, a safer method. TV over wired is 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 certainly uh, I think uh, more stable because of the technology. It's a wired technology, but it's not available to all. So, so you have to um, so you have to I think probably balance the load here uh, 
Um, there are ways to digitize coax. There are ways uh, to, to leverage technologies to the room without ripping all your walls out. And there are also ways of streaming that content over, over the wireless environment, you know, from the head end. I can think of a hotel group in Mauritius using an Anivia head end, and I'm pretty sure they've got Philips TVs, uh, where you can watch the content provided by the hotel, plus your own content, whether you're in your room on a beautiful 55-inch TV, or whether you're sat by the pool having a glass of orange juice, you know, uh, and, enjoying, and enjoying the amazing weather that you get in Mauritius. So, so, so yes, the world is changing. TV over Wi-Fi, Pedro, would you would you recommend it yet? Are we mature enough yeah. yet as a technology? Yeah, you you already mentioned it. Yes, it is uh, indeed uh, very well possible to to bring all the channels over over Wi-Fi and uh, over, over where, of course, the 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 stability over the wired services is still yeah much more robust and mature. Um, yeah, but if you, I don't know what the future will bring. And like you rightfully said, it will indeed go in a country-specific way, uh, where what countries are providing sufficient uh, uh, bandwidth and with sufficient uh, structure. It's, it's, um, yeah, we, we can do it. We sh we can surely do it. Uh, of course, as a company, um, we also have a lot of additional services over Wi-Fi as well. Um, uh, all the streaming services, uh, which currently are, of course, uh, very much important uh, to the to the industry. So yeah, it's 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 doable, it's workable, and and it depends on the country specific uh, um, how to do it and how to organize it. I would uh, I, I'd say it, there's, there's a lot of talk about bandwidth. Uh, but as soon as you start streaming uh, and have time sensitive content, uh, the focus also has to be around reliability and latency and a lot of small packet data as well going back and forth. So having a carefully thought out network uh, is essential. Uh, and whether, whether it's over Wi-Fi, whether it's reusing the existing coax, which is also possible, whether it's recabling, uh, whether it's recabling a, a, a building uh, and, you know, and, and Comscope do a lot of fiber and, uh, and, and copper cabling in, in, in buildings. I think you just have to be nimble and, you know, there are different infrastructures out there. Uh, you don't have a luxury every time of recabling or starting from from new. So it's important to engage with with people who can help you, uh, and you know hoist in, in in particular. Yeah, there is there is of course all kind of DOCSIS technology in place to uh, to digitize your uh, your, uh, your your current infrastructure, which is suitably and and where well uh, been. Uh, any partner that you should work with in this space should help you leverage the assets you've got to deliver the existing, the best possible technology. It's not all about completely recabling every time because there just isn't the money or ways to do that. So let's be realistic in this instance. It's about leveraging the assets you've got to best deliver the service with probably some new elements. Maybe you do some of it over Wi-Fi, some of it over coax. Maybe you digitize the coax. Maybe you run new cabling. Maybe you don't. Wi-Fi in hospitals, thanks to Jan Peter for, for chipping in there, is 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 becoming more and more common, more and more prevalent. So I think I think we are getting there. The next question I've got is how do we use guest data to boost our hospitality business? There, this is a very short question that has a very, very long answer. So I'm just going to pick a couple of anecdotes very quickly here. Let's take guest reservation data as an example. If you can, if you can see trends in that, if you can be presented in a nice dashboard and you can start to forecast on the result of on the back of on the back of clearly identifiable trends that you see, you can then revenue manage and you can then yield manage in a much more scientific way than perhaps all hotels are doing today. There are many tools out there. Uh, still a lot of hotels use Excel spreadsheets to work out what the rate's gonna be uh, you know, at future dates. But if we provide you that data as an industry, uh, and if you can easily extrapolate that data and see where the peaks and troughs are, where demand is, and so on and so forth, then you can set your rates at an optimal way that means that you drive your business better. Another way might be on an operational level. It might be that you want to see consumption of the content in your hotel. Well, if the platform is able to tell you how many people are watching Russia Today versus France 24 versus BBC News and CNN, and it works out that only two of those channels because of the language profile of your guests are actually being watched, 
you can remove those channels from your lineup and stop paying any subscription fees that you have for those channels. There's a, a cost saving benefit. There's also uh, an operational efficiency and guest experience benefit. How many times have guests complained about bad Wi-Fi? It immediately falls on the Wi-Fi provider as being guilty of this, but it might well be the bandwidth provider is, 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 is not delivering enough bandwidth to your hotel or is not delivering what you're paying for. But how do you prove that? It's very difficult to do so. Data and dashboards allow you as a, as a hotel general manager or an IT director or a marketing manager or whatever your function is, to be able to go and interrogate your system to see where the problem really lies and to take educated steps to be able to address that. And that's more than just sort of operational reporting. This is starting to enter the sort of business intelligence domain here. And that's a whole different webinar that we should probably do on that. But do reach out to us afterwards if you want more information on that. There is, uh, there is, tons, of, uh, there is tons of data, you know, there is tons of information to be had there. Question from Rajesh, how do you see telecoms as playing a role in digitalization of services within the hotel space? Yeah, I mean, already, uh, you know, most telecom is IP ready and IP capable. Um, telecoms as such, uh, you know, most guests are more reliant on their mobile phones than picking up a hotel phone like they used to 20 years ago, just because a perception of cost, the reality is probably quite different now. It's not expensive to call people from hotel rooms, but, but more it's probably convenience because I've got all my numbers on here. And if I need to call my wife, I can just you know click on the number to call my wife rather than have to dial it in. So there's a huge convenience aspect there. I think that on the telecom side, the greatest benefits to be had from digitalization are, uh, you know, are, are, are the synergies that can be had by that network that's going into your room. In the old days, you'd have separate telephone cabling. That, that can all run over IP today. That can all run over exactly the same network that you are delivering your TV system or your internet system or your automated minibar system or any other host of systems that's, that's in your room. This can all go essentially over a single cable. So what that means is uh, you know, simplicity in your operation, less partners to manage, less infrastructure to manage, less cost to manage. Uh, and these are all great benefits, I would say. Next question was from an anonymous attendee. I don't know who this one is. Um, personalized TV with guest messaging seems to be somewhat outdated. Completely agree with you there. Wouldn't it be better with guest communication via mobile and guest apps? Lots of people don't always watch the TV during their stay. How everyone, everyone is on their mobile is just a thought. You're absolutely right, whoever wrote this. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, um, but you're absolutely right. Uh, what we see here in the digital ecosystem are things called digital touch points. All screens, be it your mobile phone, be it the digital signage screen, be it the TV screen, these are all digital touch points. Actually, what's important here is not whether one's better than the other. Actually, you can find that from use of the data through the dashboard to find out who's viewing what and where. So actually we can establish that. But the point is, it's about the right message to the guest through the right medium. And if guest A prefers to watch the TV and guest B never does anything other than watch their tablet, these are still digital touch points. So integration with apps are fantastic. Apps have their own downfall, by the way, as well. People don't like to download native apps. There's a reluctance to do that unless you stay in that particular typically chain hotel every week. Why, why would you do that? People, there is a resistance to do that. So it's about finding multiple different touch points you can use digitally. There's also a chat function within our mobile key app or within our mobile key web app. It's a, it's, it's a platform. So there are lots of different ways to interact digitally with your guest. And what's really important here when we talk about sitting down and developing a roadmap, once you've audited yourself through the DTAM tool to understand how digital you are, is to sit down and identify what works for you as a single hotel. Because what works for you may be completely different because of the demographics and the infrastructure you've got in place for your partner hotel or your part of the same group up the road. You know, and that's why it's really important to personalize on your level as well as an operator, not, not just on the guest level too, okay? Um, next question is another one from Lee. We are known for giving mobile data insights to enterprise-wide clients based on location and loyalty schemes. What strategies are the teams employing to create mobile touch points at your venues? Who'd like to come in on this one?
tough uh, that's 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 a tough one uh so um look, i guess you're referring to location uh based uh approaches and and footfall uh and you know, a lot of a lot of the properties are, are actually fairly small uh and you, you know where they are because you can check uh, what's hitting the pause so if the pause in the bar is high you know they've been in the, in, in the bar uh i've seen some interesting uh experiences around resort uh and uh and business uh large conference uh business hotels to try and drive footfall to different areas using digital signage uh to to guide people say there's a promotion in the bar let's let's use the signage to drive drive footfall to a bar and then to track the way people you know go throughout throughout the the, the hotel and potentially with mobile integration as well when when there's an app but it, it goes back to a core element is you know do you have an app uh do you have people behind uh that app who can actually drive messaging to and uh, link up with operations so if you are rolling out an app uh, to, to, to a property, the hardest thing is not actually the app. The hardest thing is making sure all your operational staff behind are also bringing on the digital mindset. Who's going to do? Who's going to be chatting with with, with, with a guest? Who's going to be driving for promotion to drive people in the bar? How are you going to align anything you push on the app to what you're pushing on the TV or you, what you're pushing uh, on the digital signage? So it, 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 it's aligning all those touch points. Uh, which is which is which is fundamental uh, more than you know just the mobile uh, application. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered your question and if I fully comprehended it. So if I haven't, I apologies, and we can take it offline. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. One, there's a question from Michael here about recommendation for a CRM system to work with our PMS, the best one. Michael, today we're trying to we're trying to avoid a sort of sales pitch here. So, uh, if it's all right with you, we'll take that one offline. Uh, we'll get somebody to contact you. I assume we've got your details, um, but we'll happily we'll happily discuss that with you. But I, I don't think this is the right medium for that. Um, but thank you for the question, nonetheless. Okay, uh, but we will get back to you on that. Um, question from Jan Peter: uh, Are there any standards for messaging buses worked on uh, in the industry? Uh, messaging bus is an interesting concept. Uh, in terms of standards, I'm not aware of formal standards, um, but I would need to sort of dust off my HTNG knowledge on that one. Uh, for all industry standards within the hotel space, this is one of the leading think tanks uh, on different aspects of, of, of technology. Uh, forgive my ignorance, but I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, messaging buses are, are very important. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting concept. Uh, it's something that's very close to our heart within Hoist Group. Uh, but in terms of regulation through standards, we, we'd need to check and come back to you on that. Okay. Next couple of questions from Lee. Uh, Lee is asking about hotels not wanting the responsibility of removing data. GDPR scares them. Yeah, ab absolutely right. Um, and hotels need to be careful here. What you have, though, are different data sets. You have you know, individual data that essentially you and I own as, as, as data subjects. Uh, this is, you know, this is intimate data. This is our name, our age, our, our, our preferences, our stay. And then there's anonymized data, uh, which is sort of business interest data. Uh, and what you have through, uh, through cloud-based systems is the ability uh, and through dashboards to, um, to be able to aggregate anonymized data. I think that's the key, the key response here. Um, so you can, see tr you can see trends and how those trends are driving your business. On a personal data, it should always be an opt-in it should always be an opt-in environment through a loyalty scheme or through a similar scheme. Um, but yes, there are strong regulations in place driven by GDPR that, that the whole world has to pretty much comply with now, or most of the world at least. And even those countries that haven't formally adopted it have basically taken on the recommendations and are, many of them are using it as a, as, a, as a guideline, even though it's not legislation in those countries. In context, another question from Lee, just reading it. In context, personalized messaging via CRM data, simple, remove GDPR headaches for staff and legal. No one ever mentions legal. Yeah, um, no one ever mentions legal until there's a lawsuit in the newspapers and on the websites of CNN and other people. Uh, and this is why it's so important. The GDPR 
uh, fines that can be administered by the regulatory authorities. And these guys and girls do not mess around. Regular, regulatory authorities are massive. So we at Hoist Group, and I'm sure uh, Comscope and, uh, and ATEM and, and Philips would, would nod in approval at this, is, 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 you know, take GDPR very, very seriously. Make sure that whoever you're working with has strong GDPR standards and practices and applies those practices. Ask the question, do they have a DPO, a data protection officer? If they don't, I'd be very wary about doing business with those sorts of people, okay? Next one is from Timo. Timo, long time no speak. I hope you're well. Um, what is the panel's view on brand standards? Should the brands relax their technology-related brand standards to help owners, franchisees with a financial recovery after the pandemic? Thanks and regards, Timo from a certain hotel group in Germany. I think this is a loaded question if ever I, if ever I saw one, but I'd be more than delighted to answer this question. Uh, and by me answering it, I'm gonna push this one to the panel and I'm gonna get them to answer. Timo, thanks for asking a brilliant question. I will give my two pence worth at the end, I promise. So over to you, who wants to go first? Timo, you just need you, you have to mandate ruckus uh, in 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 every property. No, we're related. No, 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 we're, no. We're, related we're related to them. We're the greatest. No, I you you raise you raise a very important point, and I know a lot of hoteliers are or owners are on the receiving end of tough brand standards. Uh, I think brands need to start becoming smart and actually looking at the data uh, and seeing is the network still fit for purpose. In which case, you know, is investment needed? Uh, is it fit for purpose? for the applications which are being rolled out or not. And not just, and this is where data is super important, not just to go, you know what, every three years blanket, we refresh everything because we say every three years we have to refresh everything. I think there needs to be, you know, I think we need to be clever about the data uh, and, and being able to measure the quality uh, of, of things to make smart investments at, at the right time and not just blanket decisions with which we, you know, which the owners, uh, owners face. So, um, so I, I would tend to, I totally see your point of view. Um, and I, I, I think there there needs to be a degree of, you know, right. You know, we've been through hard times. Uh, let's be smart about this. I really agree with, with you, uh, Juan, especially when it comes to the TV service. Um, I believe that in, in, I mean, in some brands, there are some requirements that are just fixed and, and not, not necessarily very smart with the number of channels to be uh, delivered in, in the room. Um, I believe those, those kind of uh, uh, standards should evolve and maybe based on those uh, big data that we mentioned earlier, making sure that you know, people find the right channels. It, it's it's sometimes completely useless to have 200 channels if none of them are actually watched. So I believe that a lot of those requirements can evolve in order to be smarter um, and in order to be better monitored than they are currently. Uh, some of them are probably too uh, static at the moment. Yeah. That's good. I mean, yeah. that's kind of advice. Pedro, what do you think on this one? Yeah, brand standards, of course, uh, is, a, is a currently a, a, a hot topic. The hotel uh, organizations themselves are constantly also redefining brand standards, looking at what is possible, what is achievable. Of course, for them, it's uh, it's a bit more uh, of an issue because within the brands, they have uh, a lot of different uh, ways of execution. Uh, of course, uh, that that is that is that is a very fair question. Um, and it's, it's also taken very seriously currently by the uh, hotel chains as we also see and get lots of additional demands and questions in forums around, let's say digitalization of, 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 of uh, brand recommendations, uh, sorry, what the brand recommendation need to be updated with new uh, digitalized services, that's what I mean to say. And um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's an ongoing process and um, it's very very wise to keep uh, to keep uh, keep up with the the technical standards also in the brand recommendation because in the end that is why the hotel is selecting you and uh, as a guest or oh, sorry that is why the guest is selecting you as a hotel uh, which makes it all worthwhile being very up to date with uh, with technology and guest in 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 the brand standard. I think our position on this is, is interesting. Brand standards are there for a reason. It's to create quality and consistency and recognizability. 
Um, but I think we also have to recognize that owners and franchisees, you know, have been through the most unprecedented financial and health times of our generation. You know, I, I hope our children never have to experience the sort of hardships that, that we as, a, as, as, as humanity have been through over the last year and a bit. So I completely get where Timo's coming from on this. We have actually had proactive discussions with some of our chain customers to look at reduction in the brand standards. I think it's something they are listening to. I'm not sure how quickly these things will move. So I think the, uh, for, the, for the reasons that, that, that have been given. So I think the other emphasis here is to make things easier for you, okay? It's how do we support industry? Within the digital transformation campaign page that I referred to earlier, on our website, there are also a whole bunch of offers. Okay, and these are designed to help you. There is a buy now, pay later scheme. Uh, there is financing available. That's really, really important. So that rather than have to pay up front, having spent your war chest on keeping the lights on for the last 15 months, you know, we've got ways of, of deferring payment, of paying in installments or through financing, leasing, subscription business models. You know, look at those and see if those fit your needs because the idea is that we're going to hopefully have a strong summer here. Uh, occupancies are going to rebuild, rate is going to rebuild over time. So rather than make major capital outlay and investments now, leverage what's available to you. There's also a buy one, get one free scheme on licenses. There's a great offer on lots of mobile key. There's some great offers from our partners at Philips, uh, Anivia uh, and, and Comscope as well. So go and reference those on the pages, go take a look. Brand standard suspensions or, or, or relaxations, we'll continue to talk about to the chains about those. Um, but again, I think it's our mission as a provider to the industry to help you um, to help you uh, to help you find ways to introduce these requirements that is not going to be, you know, all one lump sum up front. Okay. Lovely to hear from you, Timo. Thanks so much for your question. Ruben, uh, down in Mauritius, um, will a centralized cloud-based head end be available for Mauritius? Yeah, so we, we've actually got the technology up and running today um, for several regions of the world. Um, we're out looking very actively at that, going out to, uh, to further regions. Uh, Mauritius is, uh, is definitely on the list, given the size of our business there. We're, it's not ready yet today. But we'll take that one offline with you and we will yeah we will catch up with you um directly on that thank you for the question uh question from ulanbeck when implementing custom-based digitization is there clear projected roi to justify the cost what a fantastic question um how do you justify a cost of this? You track it, you track it through data. How do you get the data? You make sure that your systems can provide you with that data and that you can collect that data all in one place. Uh, do we have ROI models for, uh, for digitization? Yes, we absolutely do. We have hard and soft. We have numbers that, uh, that, that can be shared. Uh, and we have uh, anecdotal evidence and feedback direct from customers as well. Uh, again, for me, this is all part of the road mapping exercise. You know, work with people who understand what they're talking about. Make sure that what they're telling you is credible. Ask them for information. Ask them for usage. Ask them for consumption. Ask them for revenue or see that revenue yourself, you know, through, through the tools at your disposal. Make sure you work with people who provide the right tools. Um, so the, the short answer is yes, our ROI models are, are available in many cases. It's such a broad subject. I don't know what specific area you're looking for, but, um, but just, just as part of your roadmap for your own, um, what's the word, for your own reassurance, make sure that, the, that whatever area you're focusing on for digitization, that, that, that people talk sensible numbers to you uh, and credible numbers to you and, and preferably can show evidence to you, okay? Um, and by the way, ROI uh, models are exactly what we work with to help encourage people to take our products and services. You know, it's all great to say, hey, I've got the best technology in the world. But I think you'd rather listen to a, to a, to a technology partner who says, I've got the best technology in the world that will help you do this, 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 and achieve that financially. I think that makes the sale, you know, much more likely. So, so yeah, it's in all of our interest to come to you with ROI models. Question from Serena, in case of internet failure, 
will we still be available to work? This is in the cloudified environment, I assume that you are um, referring to there. Um, it depends on your cloud strategy, really. Um, we hear terms like redundancy, uh, failover, multiple ISP lines. I mean, if physically somebody with a digger goes through all your cables into the hotel, uh, you know, nothing's going to work, okay? But what you see from the data center space initially and what you see more and more in hotels are multiple lines coming in from different providers. They don't have to be big lines either. They can be backup lines. They can be all sorts of different internet technologies. And really it's about a risk mitigation exercise here. There are products and services that are cloudified that have local sort of on-premise modes as well, directly designed for exactly this sort of instance. So this is really about choosing your technology rightly and what is right for you individually as a property. You know, if you're in a remote location with generally poor internet connectivity up a high mountain somewhere, you know, you, you want to make sure that you can keep the lights on should, should that internet go down, especially if it goes down regularly, you know. Uh, and really that's part of the, the onboarding exercise, the consultancy exercise here that we'd be happy to work on with you as I'm sure our partners will. Um, yeah. Another question from Ruben. Uh, guest engagement app seems to become the central touch point with the guest versus the IP TV system. Is that something you see? So guest engagement apps. Yeah, apps are, apps are very important for building brand and loyalty and strategy. Uh, and I don't think that's going to go away. Um, there is some reluctance, as I mentioned, on apps we see in the industry. I, I do it too. I don't like to have too many apps on my phone because with my bad eyes, I get lost on my phone and I can't find anything I'm looking for. So on a practical level, it's, 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 it's not too great either. Um, in terms of IPTV systems as a platform, uh, frankly, it is for me now increasingly a network solution. It's increasingly just another digital touch point, a really important one because it's a beautiful screen in, in, in the room. And for me and for us at Hoist Group, it is part of an integrated ecosystem with the app. It doesn't compete with the app. It's a complementary digital touch point. Uh, and that's really how we philosophize, if you like, the technology and the technology delivery and, and, and the guest loyalty piece of that. Okay. Question from Michael, is there a best practice methodology technology to measure the cost per acquisition for all segments and channels of business direct OTA agents and telephone? Uh, Michael, I'm sure there is, and I know that there are PMS and, uh, and all related service specialists on the call today uh, from within Hoist Group. Uh, so I've now got a second thing to come back to you on. Uh, and we will make sure that we follow up on that with you directly. Great question, thank you very much. Um, next question is from Victoria. Which digitalization trends do you currently see on internal operations level in terms of DPA, AI, and ECM? Now that is a great question. Um, Digitalization trends, it's, what do we see? We see uh, on a very basic level, you know, there's a movement away from analog to digital. There's reduction in consumption of consumables, paper and the like, excuse me, I've got a 10 week old puppy uh, at my feet here that's making a noise. Uh, no, not, definitely not time to play now, puppy. Um, we see, uh, yeah, we see a trend and a move towards, you know, guest enablement and enhancement of services as a result of that move away from paper-based analog systems, you know, service management, task management, those are key areas there, um, collapsing and converging the infrastructure, driving operational savings, that's a, that's a key area there. Mobile first as a strategy is probably a smart one internally and also for your guests as well, because as one of the other panel, not panelists, one of the other contributors earlier put, you know, everything's on the mobile now. So let's design it for the mobile. In terms of where this goes, uh, are we gonna have robots delivering room service to our rooms? It's starting to happen already. So the short answer is it's such a broad subject. I think the world's your oyster. It depends for what you as a hotelier want to do. AI and machine learning, uh, are these uh, are these uh, are these tools that we can start to introduce? The answer is we already are. 
okay? AI is getting bigger and bigger as is machine learning within hospitality. And we're starting to see the results of that. It's a, it's a phenomenally intriguing trend. Uh, the machines are literally taking over the world if we're not careful. Um, but this is, you know, this is all creating uh, a hugely data rich environment that, that we can really, or you can really truly exploit with our support to improve your, your, your back of house and your guest experience. Um, again, it's, it's, a very long, it's a very short question with a very long answer. It probably warrants its own specific uh, session with the subject matter experts on here. But yeah, I think in terms of sort of, you know, internal operations and getting to a point where it's just seamless operation, where forecasting becomes intuitive, where rate and revenue management is optimized, where service delivery is optimized, uh, where scalability is brought in as you expand as a hotelier. I think we're entering a completely new realm of, of opportunity here through cloudification, AI, and a number of the other technologies, specifically within the digital transformation space. Um, that could be a wonderful next uh, webinar to, uh, to the marketing team, to my marketing team on the call. Uh, I think that's a lovely one to get into. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jerome, for your, for your comment about the puppy. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is uh, pretty much it from the questions. Uh, I would like to, first of all, thank the panelists for giving up their precious time today and for supporting us in this digital transformation campaign uh, throughout this process. So Juan, Petter, Damien, thank you so much for all you've contributed. Uh, I'd like to thank the marketing team uh, for putting this all together. And most of all, I'd like to thank you, the attendees to the panel, uh, to the webinar. We have recorded it. So if there are people who you'd like to share this with, or if you'd like to go back and go, did he really say that? No, I'm really kidding. Uh, if you want to go back and, and, and re-listen to, uh, to this webinar, uh, we can make it available to you. Um, and if you've got any questions for us, uh, please don't hesitate to drop us a line at marketing at hoistgroup.com. Uh, like uh, Michael's questions there, we can, we can get you to the right subject matter expert within our group. Uh, and don't forget, folks, go to hoistgroup.com forward slash digital transformation and, and go and take a look at the DTAM tool. We'd love to hear your feedback on it as well. On that note, I'm going to say thank you all. Uh, take care. Please do stay safe and, uh, and, and hopefully see you in a month's time, 16th of June, for the follow-up webinar where we're going to be talking directly to hoteliers. Thanks a million. Take care. See you soon. Bye now.